Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jeweler Barry Roberts. Welcome to my company, Roberts & Co. here in London. Today I'm going to share with you how I make one of the necklaces and pendants available in our shop in the Roberts & Co. online store. A coin necklace, a lucky coin necklace made from solid silver, antique English coins. I think first of all, I'll tell you a little bit about the coins we use to make the necklaces and what makes them so special. And then I'll get onto the jewelry bench and share with you exactly how I turn coins into wearable pieces of jewelry. So, first of all, the coins. We have a history of using coins here in England that dates back to the second century BC. The coins we use were made here in London by the Royal Mint. The Royal Mint can trace its history back to the year 886, so over a thousand years ago. Once the Tower of London was built, the Royal Mint moved in and that's where they produced the coins for around 800 years. They moved out of the Tower of London into their own building between 1809 and 1812, into a building called Royal Mint Court, just outside the walls of the castle, at the end of Tower Bridge, and it's still there today. So you can see where the coins, where the coins were made. It looks like a fortress. However, the Royal Mint moved out in the 1960s. They moved out of London, they moved out of England, they moved to Wales. However, all the coins we use are pre-1920, so they would all, be, would all have been made either in Royal Mint Court or in the Tower of London. And I'll tell you why we used before 1920. Up until 1920, the silver coloured coins that people carried in their pockets and spent in shops here in England, all the silver coloured coins were made from solid silver. They were the same grade silver we used to make jewellery, sterling silver, so we can use traditional jewellery making techniques to turn pre-1920 coins into wearable pieces of jewellery. So why wear coins as jewellery? People have been keeping coins and wearing coins as lucky charms as long as, as coins have existed, so for centuries. This isn't a design that we came up with, it's, um, it's a centuries old design and different cultures have had, over the centuries have had the, the minor details to the superstitions have changed but the basic idea is the same if you wear or keep a, a lucky coin it will bring you good luck however i think today most people keep or wear coin jewelry not because they're superstitious just because they think it looks cool and they they do look cool um so today the demand for coin jewellery is so great that there are companies around the world mass producing reproduction vintage coins and um, vintage coin necklaces. However, what makes ours special is all of the coins were once legal tender here in England. They are genuine antique coins. Today we're going to be using coins that were minted by the Royal Mint here in Royal Mint Court in London in 1919 but we pretty much use it every year and can use it every year that we can get our well every year of coin we can get our hands on from coin collectors from pre-1920 today i'm going to make three necklaces three three pence piece necklaces these are also known as thruppence or thruppany bits i'm going to turn three three pence coins into pendants one will be kept silver and the other two are gold plate so all three are sterling silver but two will be plated with gold one yellow gold and one with red or rose gold so let's get onto the bench and turn the coins into pendants and necklaces okay so i'm at the bench with our three solid silver antique three pence pieces to each one of these i'm going to be soldering a three millimeter sterling silver jump ring which will allow it to be worn as a pendant. The challenge here is getting the coin and the jump ring to the same temperature at the same time because they're completely different size pieces of silver. For this I'm going to be using a special flux, a blend of fluxes mixed with methylated spirits which will give the antique silver more protection than a standard flux like borax would. And I'm going to be using a micro soldering torch so I get pinpoint accuracy and I can control the temperature of the two pieces very accurately. Once the two pieces, the coin and the jump ring, are at the correct temperature, I can then apply the solder with a solder pick to the right place at the right time. So, let's get soldering.
Okay, success. We've um, soldered three jump rings to our three coins. And now each one of our antique sterling silver coins now has a three millimeter sterling silver jump ring added to the top of it. And now so each one can be worn as a pendant on a necklace. We're gonna add a five millimeter sterling silver jump ring to each one and we're gonna solder it closed. Okay, so now we've added a three millimeter jump ring to the top of each coin and a five millimeter bail to that jump ring. We now need to clean, polish, and then gold plate the pendants and their necklaces. So here we have our finished necklaces and pendants. We've started with some solid silver antique coins made by the Royal Mint here in London in 1919. And after adding two rings to each one, we've then cleaned and polished them and added each one to a necklace we make in our workshop here. This one we've polished and left silver. This one we've plated with 22 karat yellow gold. So it looks very similar in color to a solid gold coin. This one, we have plated with 18 karat red or rose gold, so it looks just like a piece of antique fine jewellery. Now, we don't just make these in 1919, we make them in pretty much every year we can get our hands on from coin collectors. So if you'd like to see close up images of these ones or the other years we make, then check out our website and see which years we've currently got available. I hope you enjoyed this look at how we make these antique coins into wearable pieces of jewellery, into coin pendants and necklaces. And I'll see you again next time. Doodles.